This is one of Magnus Carlsen's favourite openings to play in title Tuesday, the strongest chess tournament in the world for online blitz. Now it's known as the KDAS opening, formally, but informally known as the plough on this channel because you plough that pawn down the board early doors and throw the opponent. But Magnus's opponent here, he's unaired by it and goes a6 in response. Now who's Magnus playing? Well he's a young Uzbekistani player, Mukhidin Madaminov. He's only an international master but incredibly strong at blitz already and something very rare and unusual occurs later in this game. So stick around. Magnus now goes pawn e4. And by the way, this is the title Tuesday on the 16th of January. Early edition. Clock times on the left and they get a second back per move. So now we see e5 played in response. Magnus carries on here with developing the knight. We see knight c6 and d4. So it takes us into a scotch game. Pawn captures, knight captures, but we've got these two moves inserted. Now after queen f6, common response for black, pressuring this knight in the center twice, white most commonly goes bishop e3 or takes on c6. Knight b3, however, is a rarer sideline here and it's not the most optimal move. You know, you decentralize a piece. What's Magnus going for will, as always, try to mix it up throw the opponent, but queen e6 in response, a good move. Queen g6, also a common idea in these kind of structures. The pawn pressured, Magnus defends with knight c3, f3 was possible, the bishop pins the knight, therefore renews this threat, and Magnus ignores it to an extent. Again, he could have defended the pawn, but he carries on like this, saying if you want to take here, Fine, give me the bishops, give me a great diagonal. Yes, you win the pawn, but I'm going to get counterplay. This is a sample line. You can actually lift the rook, bring it to g3, pressure here, king f8, best move, sample of how white gets play despite being a pawn down. But playable for both players, different game. The knight not captured, knight f6 instead. Carrying on the development, pressuring the center, Bishop d3, f3 possible, good moves, but Magnus goes queen e2. Another quirky side kind of move from Magnus. We get castles, still the pawn not touched. Finally, Magnus goes f3, and now d5 in response, cracking open the center. Black has fully equalized here and is up on the clock. There's something you don't always see. So captures was played, knight recaptures, and now Magnus should take these queens off here. Get the ladies off the board, then carry on the position. It's roughly level. But he plays more ambitiously with knight takes on d5. We get bishop takes with check. This knight recaptures from b3. You know, it hasn't gone on the most wonderful circuit here. Magnus losing time. And after queen takes, well, the white king is looking a bit at risk in the corner here. So Magnus goes with queen e4. Sorry, not the corner, in the center. Queen e4, looking to trade these queens off the board. But queen a5 is a great move. Pinning this knight, which is a bit miserable, and pressuring this pawn. You know, think castle's queen side. So bishop d3 from Magnus. He threatens mate in one. g6 covers that one. And now a very ambitious move. Not forced. Magnus could have moved this queen somewhere, anticipating bishop f5. Or even castles. But he castles queen side, giving an entire pawn if black wants to take it, but it wasn't played for good reason. Magnus now gets time to go pawn h5. Critical move, because if check, fine, so what, knight blocks, but more importantly, after the natural developing move, bishop f5, when you pushed this pawn, you cleared a square on h4, and white's now getting this huge attack. This is one sample line where you have to actually let your king side be exposed just to not get mated. You know, there wasn't really much better. So that's why the pawn was not touched. Instead, bishop f5 immediately played. Great move because you've no longer got this square available. So Magnus, he now finds the best move. If you go queen e2, you run into rook fe8 with tempo for black. 
queen c4, well then there's knight e5, all those kind of tempo moves. So Magnus goes knight b3, nice idea. He's saying, okay, you take me, which was played. By the way, we should explore what if black takes this pawn here. Well, now uh, queen f4 once again played. The knight covers this square. And okay, white looks for counterplay around the king. You've just sent the queen a little bit offside. But in the game, we see takes. Magnus takes the knight. This is his point. And if you now take this bishop, well, you can take here. There's that sort of stuff going on. But black's got a great move in response, and it's bishop takes on f3. And because you're now hitting this rook, about to ditch an exchange, plus if you take here, you know, there's options to recapture, well, the best is pawn captures, knight captures. And when the smoke clears, black is a pawn ahead and with the better structure. Magnus in trouble, but he is the end game goat. He pushes with pawn h5. King g7 played, pawn f4 now on the board. The knight recycles back towards the center. We get a3, keeping an eye on knight b4, and now f5 from black, keeping this pawn isolated and weak not allowing a liquidation. Rook dg1, the black rook centralizes. This one lifts up the board. Maybe Magnus is gonna double. We get knight e7, anticipating such shenanigans. Also keeping an eye on this pawn, you know, in case there's ever pins, if the rook moves and the bishop tries to take, using the pin, etc. Magnus now goes bishop e2, bit of a waiting move, knight d5 played, targeting f4, covered by the rook, and this one now activates, hits the bishop, which returns to the square it came from, and now this is a nice invasion, rook to e3 played, offering the trade of rooks, Magnus declines, he wants to keep tricks alive, king f6, breaks that pin down the g-file, we get rook h1, rook g3, and after takes, pawn takes, Magnus goes active, but rook g4 is a very incisive counter threat because f4 is dropping, then you've got the connected pawns running. We get bishop c4 pressuring the knight, which is holding this pawn. Now we see takes here. Excellent play from the young player from Uzbekistan. Rook takes, knight takes, rook captures on c7, still only a pawn down, but look at the quality of the black pawns. b5 drives back the bishop, and g5, vamos, they've got the running shoes on. Magnus checks, we know how good he is at defending. He takes this pawn now, material restored, this one weak, but g4, the black player relentless. Rook a7 plus g3 rook g7 and now this is absolutely fantastic because it looks like g2 should be impossible but guess what the move is played on the board now why does it look impossible well surely bishop captures right and here white's just restored the material well pawn ahead in fact should be a draw right at least but here's the sneaky point black now reveals it with king to f6 really fantastic resource because the rook cannot stay with the bishop if you try rook g3 then you run into this check you go to Forktown, population magnus king moves rook drops that is of course a lost game and there's no other squares available therefore you have to give ground now the bishop drops this is a win for black if the nerve can be held. We get king g5, rook takes here, the pawn is pinned. So king g4, c4 looks for counterplay, knight e3, what a fantastic move that is, because say you carry on with c5, bang, you just got checkmated, very powerful attacking force, as we've seen so many times recently. So b3 gives the king some room, and f4 though, the pawn's going through, can it be stopped? Rook e5, pressures the knight, don't push, drop the knight. So knight f5 played, king b2, f3, rook e4 check, king g3, now the rook comes back, hits that knight, king covers, hits the rook, now knight e3, Magnus anticipating f2, goes rook h1, but f2 comes anyway. Magnus Carlsen resigns the game, 
loses to an international master. You very rarely see Magnus going down to a non-grandmaster, right? What a game by this young man. Exceptional. I hope you enjoyed this one. Smash subscribe to never miss a future video. And if you want to see the entire incredible Magnus playlist, all of his opening rubbish on Move 1 and beyond, then check out the playlist on screen. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.